We can now speak to Peter of the Haida, who joins us via Skype from CAF's Media Center in Malabo. Peter, fantastic news that the host will remain in the competition. Now, how impressed were you with Equatorial Guinea? I, I think they, they played very well yesterday. They, they, it was a real team effort. Um, I think obviously they, they had the, the whole crowd and I can say the whole country behind them. They obviously knew about that. Um, and I think they, they, they knew that they could really, I won't say make history because last time they also advanced, but, but I think it, it was a terrific, terrific performance. Um, and I think they deserve to go through. Okay, the Gabon coach was scathing about the penalty. Given that that led to the first goal, now, was that sour grapes or did he actually have something to gripe about? No, um, to be quite honest, obviously at first when, when you saw, when, when, you, when you heard the penalty um, being awarded or heard the, the whistle blow, um, you thought, oh, here goes another home, uh, home decision. Um, but I, I was, in, in, in hindsight, I was speaking to some journalists also afterwards and, and also re-looking um, re at the, the situation on, on TV and in slow motion. I, I think George Costa really can't complain about that decision. Um, I think he clipped him with his, with his foot um, and, and certainly it certainly was, was a penalty you can give and you probably should have given, um, but I don't think it, it was a, a wrong decision at all. Okay, now Congo's coach Claude Roy continues to build on his legendary status. I mean, what is his secret? Well, I think it's 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 really for one, it's the experience that he has. He's he's just such an experienced coach in African football, and that really makes makes a huge difference. Um, he's managed to to bring the the best out of players. I mean, his his squad is really um, on paper. You know, they they don't have all the players playing in top European clubs or leagues. Um, he's probably got um, more or more domestic based players than most most other teams in the competition. Um, and I think it's this experience really that 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 he's managed to to bring to the best effect, um, you know, and, and after leading, um, especially in the game against Gabon, uh, you know, you could see they 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 they're doing what the coach wants them to do. And and that, that showed. And, and I think that's why he is there. I think it's the seventh or eighth time that he's gone through to the quarterfinals. OK, we've had some mixed reviews on social media, but what are your thoughts on Saturday's fixtures? Drab draws or scintillating stalemates? No, I would I would say they were actually pretty exciting draws um, in that that Ghani and Mali have been the teams that have been impressed, impressive in in this tournament and in both their games. Um, after taking the lead, it, it forced um, the Ivory Coast and also Cameroon to come. Uh, well, not not Cameroon; they weren't behind, but it forced the Ivory Coast to come from behind again. Um, I actually spoke to Hervé Renard afterwards, and he said that he he was joking and said that is such an excellent coach himself because he, his substitutes um, scored in both games. His substitutions were obviously very inspired. Um, and I think the results have, have opened, have left the group in a fantastic, exciting um, position. And in that, I think that it seems very likely that one of the teams, if not both of the teams that go through, could do so um, on their disciplinary records, that is yellow cards and red cards, in that in the game between Mali and Guinea, if if it's a draw, both teams are exactly equal on points and on goal difference. Um, and in that case, um, Guinea, if they don't get two or more yellow cards, more than than Mali would go through on their disciplinary record because I think they've only had none. In fact, they've had no yellow cards or one F at all. And in the other game, Cameroon is in the driving seat because of um, the red card for Javinho and the they also the number of yellow cards that um, Ivory Coast have. So again, in the draw between those two sides, Cameroon would go through on their disciplinary record. Yeah. OK, let's stay away from the disciplinary route, but why has there been such a low amount of goals in this tournament? Well, I mean, I think we, that we've, we've had this before. I remember a few competitions ago, there were few, even fewer, goal, fewer goals being scored. Um, I, I mean, I, I think the, the average, I'm not exactly sure what, what the average is, 
but I don't think the average is that that low compared to other competitions. Um, I think a lot of um, the teams have very strong defensive records, um, you know, and and in in this where where the where the teams are on equal footing, I think more importantly than the number of goals, it's it's the number of draws, um, and the you know you've only had two games that have had two goal differences between the teams, and I think that really makes um, is what it's about. Okay, finally, let's take a look back to Friday, where Ghana beat Algeria 1-0. Now, how important is John to Ghana? Well, I, I, th I think Ghana desperately needed um, needed that win, obviously. Um, though they would have still had a chance with one point, but it's it's not easy for them to come back. Um, to, to and, and after losing um, their opening game, against Senegal in, in such dramatic fashions late. I think it's kind of um, poetic justice, if you want to call it, that that they managed to turn things around and, and win. Um, Azamor Gian, the, the captain, obviously is very important. Um, and he, he made a difference. He, he played a captain's game. You know, he's not he's, he's not scared to, to go forward when he needs to. Um, and I think he, he's taken because they've got a lot of youngsters, they've got a lot of deputants um, in the side, and he's taken them with him. And I think they, I would think they're looking strong to advance to the quarterfinals at South Africa's expense. Okay, thank you there, Peter.